Tano Falava, this is Pacific Waves from RNZ Pacific. I'm Elisha Fern. Coming up. Unfortunately, our, spon- our sponsors happen to be Coca Cola. We will discuss with them as to how we could reduce the branding, maybe, on the game. We look at the impact of global food giants sponsoring sporting events in the Pacific. Also, the Tongan government responds to criticism from King Tupo VI over its operation of Trouble Lulutai Airlines. And there's been so many great world champ- boxing world champions from the past that never went to the Olympics and they still became some of the greatest fighters in the world. Find out why a decorated new air boxer is heading to Russia instead of competing at the Paris Olympics. We begin with a new series investigating the influence of global food brands in the Pacific Islands. The director of Fiji's biggest sporting event has promised to drop the name and branding of its sponsor, Coca-Cola, for next year's 50th anniversary. Organisers of Coca-Cola Fiji finals have been discussing how to limit branding of the sugary drink company from the athletic event, which has long been a staple for thousands of school students and their families. With a brand deal expiring next year, organisers have a chance to choose a different sponsor. I spoke with Fiji Secondary Schools Athletics Association Acting Secretary, who is also the 2024 Coca-Cola Games Competition Director, Bill Colati. Coca-Cola Game uh, came into existence as a game started off in 1975, but uh, unofficially. We have uh, big plans for next year, since we are turning 50. So come next year, you, you might not be able to see anything called Coke, because we will now call it the Fiji final. So that's some of the things that we will change. One of the things that we will need to change is the brands on everything that we use. Uh, we will ask uh, them politely because there's nothing binding. When I came into the system, uh, into the school system, this game was already there uh, and it has been growing from uh, stand to stand. Fiji is a, such a small country that uh, to run this kind of game, you will need a good sponsor. Our contact with, uh, with the Coca-Cola company comes to an end uh, next year. After next year, uh, we will have to sit and decide. Coca-Cola is so flexible that, uh, that they have agreed that we call our game uh, the, the name of the game that we all know, which is the Fiji Finals. If we are able to get another company to support us in the way that uh, that uh, this uh, current sponsor is uh, supporting us then uh, we will uh, we will consider moving uh, because right now as uh, you have alluded to uh, we understand uh, uh, the impact of uh, what can happen and uh, and that is something that is also understood uh, by the by the sponsor themselves and uh, we've had uh, discussions on that, uh, and one of the steps that we have taken is to go back to the original name of the game and call it the Fiji Finals. Uh, we have come uh, to such a, a time now where we've uh, uh, now discovered that sugary drinks are not uh, appropriate for kids, uh, so maybe we are now going to decide uh, to, to move in another direction. But then, as I've said, we will have to look at uh, other companies that are available in Fiji. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have that luxury uh, like other countries in, uh, in, in the world where they can, uh, they can be uh, you know, easily taken up by some other big companies. Yeah, so that would be a challenge to us. This association is run purely by teachers, and we only do this on voluntary basis. Only when we are free, then we attend to this game and the logistics of the game. It, it, it will be difficult for, to run the game without a sponsor. You talked about the impacts. What are yeah, the impacts? But, what, what discussions yeah. have you been having about sugary drinks influencing young people and the psychology behind the sponsorship? Um, yes. I, from, 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 the, from the studies... Uh, uh, you know, conducted. I, I, I think uh, you know there, there, are, there are parts of the world that have already proven that that sugary drinks uh, have negative effects on on people. Um, we would be surprised. I mean, uh, happy to to also um, um, get data on. Uh, but uh, as you know, 
the whole country is moving towards a healthy diet. And that is the, one, the first re reason why we, we, we wanted to call our games the Fiji Finals now is because of that. And uh, ne next year, as I've said, next year, uh, this sponsorship is coming to an end. And uh, that's when we will uh, sit and decide. And uh, who knows, maybe we could be uh, just asking Coke that uh, now we, we will have to leave and move on. But as I've said, uh, this uh, game with the history, we will need something that uh, can uh, keep this game uh, uh, you know, live, alive and, and, and maybe continue into the future. So Fiji Finals is going to be the new name for the Coca-Cola Games. If Coca-Cola does stay on and there are no other sponsors that come forward or no other companies that are able to sponsor the Fiji Finals for the 50th anniversary next year, would you still allow the sponsorship to happen but take away the name from the title as well as any kind of Coca-Cola branding on giant checks that are given to some players that win and on trophies and medals and that sort of thing? If we were to break ties with, with, uh, with our sponsors uh, like next year, uh, then of course we're going to start from zero again and start looking for sponsors. Unfortunately, our, sp our sponsors happen to be Coca-Cola. Uh, we, uh, we will discuss with them as to how we could reduce the branding maybe on the game. If, if we're given another safer brand, uh, which uh, can replace uh, this company, then of course we are going to uh, start considering that. Uh, it would be fair to say that uh, all these changes should be happening by next year because we have just started the process of this negotiation this year. Next episode, we hear from a leading Pacific health expert who says it's unacceptable for big brands to still be sponsoring sporting events in 2024. The Tongan government has responded to criticism from King Tupo VI over its operation of Trouble Lulutai Airlines, the government airline has been dogged with mechanical issues since its inception under the previous government. The king had questioned finances around the airline and suggested the government shouldn't be operating such a business. The Prime Minister Huakava Meliku Siosi Sovalini says the government would continue to operate Lulutai but would seek a buyer. Don Wiseman spoke with aviation engineer Tevitu Palu, who previously operated Real Tonga Airlines, and asked him if he was interested in linking up with Lulutai. We need to treat it and look at the safety concerns and the status of state safety of air transportation. We also need to look at the uh, economics of the operation and the liability. You know, we need to relook at the uh, focus, focus on the on the customer needs and what's there to benefit the public air transportation. So I'm in support of uh, any development moving forward to support the decision moving forward in order to achieve what's beneficial for Tonga. Well, travel to the Outer Islands is of critical importance for both Tongans and for tourists, isn't it? But it's been uh, highly compromised by issues with the Lulatai planes. And you, in your role as, a, as an aircraft engineer, you're very familiar with some of the issues. If the government is looking for a partner, it's talking about continuing to operate Lulutai, but we'll look for a partner. Could that partner be, be you? Could you resurrect Real Tonga and join up? Well, the, the reality is Real Tonga and Palo Aviation have approached government in many occasions. In fact, way back to beginning of the COVID, we requested, we asked for opportunities to go into partnership, combine resources to strengthen the airline service in Tonga moving forward. But I operated Real Tonga for seven years alone with no support with outside. We didn't have the benefit of, you know, as a government partnership at that time. We had difficulties at that time as well. But at the time, I requested the government at the time to, to become partnership, but that never happened. So the questions you ask whether we are interested, it is my interest. Uh, aviation is my passion. Um, in fact, we continue to provide all the aviation services we can. We support in New Zealand, Fiji Airways, Qantas, 
village in Australia uh, with their maintenance. We we also try to support Lolo Thai as well. In fact, I I sent a uh, recent another uh, request to current government, to the prime minister in particular, and of our service in partnership, we haven't had any response for that request. Well, now that the prime minister has said publicly that he's looking for partners, you'd expect him perhaps to get back in touch? I'm hopeful. I wish uh, they will consider our request. But as I said, uh, it has been, we, we requested um, in several occasions. So, uh, yeah, we, we do look forward. We welcome a way forward. We, we have some strength where we can contribute to support the air transportation in uh, whatever form suitable and workable for all parties. The king complained in the speech from the throne at the end of the last parliamentary session that the government shouldn't be involved in running an airline. What's your view on that? I think um, it can be uh, difficult at times to regulate and also operate an airline. In reality, if you if you look at New Zealand and New Zealand government in particular, very similar to Fiji and Australia, that they, the airline is operated by independent bodies, uh, separate from the regulators. It's kind of different in Tonga for some time. So somehow the government should be involved. It's good to have government support, but to operate the airline, I don't agree with that. So there needs to be some degree of independence. That's correct. A new air boxer based in Aotearoa is heading to Russia to compete in the 2024 World Friendship Games, seen as the potential rival to the Paris Olympics. Commonwealth bronze and Pacific Games gold medalist Duncan Tutakitoa Williams is heading to Russia instead after finding out Nui was excluded from the Olympics because, like many other smaller nations, it does not have a recognised National Olympic Committee. Lydia Lewis spoke with Duncan Tutakitoa Williams about the struggle small nations like Nui have when they're competing at the Olympics. Me not being able to go to the Olympic Games... Russia are hosting these World Friendship Games as like a better option than the Olympics. Whereas, see how there's countries, certain countries that can't compete in the Olympics. It's more political rather than just making them mainly more for for athletes. So that's what the World, World Friendship Games is for. For um, it's he uh, what is it? It's for it's for all athletes in all countries. Anyone can compete, and it's more beneficial for athletes too whereas you don't win money win money prizes for winning a medal at the olympic games whereas in um russia you, you can should they be doing something about this yeah i think they could do something about it but i think where where the olympics should be about showcasing and showcasing like athlete athletic skills that's rather show more of like political power whereas the world friendship games in russia would be more based around, yeah, showcasing athletic skills and not worrying about the political things. If something does change in the future, would you like to get to the Olympics? So I would have loved to have gone, but like, man, that would have been, that would have been, that would, oh, I don't even, I can't even describe. That would have been great too. But then I think, I just think of it like this: like, there's been so many great world champ, boxing world champions, and the from the past that never went to the Olympics and they still became some of the oh, one of the some of the greatest fighters in the world so I just take it as that. It sounds like you've had to grow a lot throughout this process to process these things. Oh uh, yeah, definitely because it's like you just get you just have all these dreams and goals and then you get told that there's no way of it happening so then it's like damn what do you do? You just got to you just got to keep them moving. What's your message to other young athletes facing similar problems? You to never give up. Like, think about why you started and then think about where, where you might end up if you give up. But don't, you, don't even want to, you, don't, you don't even want to think about giving up. Even though, even though you might be faced with challenges, even though you might be faced with challenges, you can always find another way. And then you just keep on moving keep progressing, find a way, adapt, and then just never give up, keep going and going. What can people do to support you on your journey? If there's anybody out there, like anyone that wants to sponsor me, donate to me, there is a link in my Instagram bio, my Facebook bio, my TikTok bio. Just click on the link and then you can 
find you can find it, all the details you need to. Two Fijian-born actors were welcomed home for the grand premiere of Stranded Pearl in Fiji. The adventure rom-com, which was shot in the Cook Islands, features a stellar cast of Pacifica and international talent. Kuroi Hawkins has more. A team of five cast and crew travelled through Suva, Lambasa, Nandi and Lautoka and attended meet and greets at premiere events throughout Fiji. Lead actor and producer Anandu Naidu was touched by the warm response from the local community. I feel proud. Uh, I feel proud that they felt that as a Fijian, I've done them justice. That's all I want. They were blown away and so was I, you know, by the reaction. Appearing in the film as a police detective was Jagdish Punja. He shared the moment sitting in the audience with his parents and says the feedback he's received from family and friends has been incredibly uplifting. The response was overwhelming. The audience loved the movie. They were not able to figure out what's going to happen in the end, you know, and that was the important part. And today they're encouraging us about our next movie. The second male lead, Australian Robert Reitano, says the week in Fiji sharing the film was a rewarding experience. How could you not enjoy such a beautiful island? We all got to connect together while we filmed. Now here we are a few years later, hanging out, promoting the film, really bonding. It's that reward of your hard work well done. We do it for the joy of our audience. The Stranded Pearl is out now in Damuda and live cinemas across Fiji and the team are looking forward to the film touring New Zealand next month. That's Pacific Waves for today. To listen back, head over to rnzi.com slash programs. We're also on Spotify, Apple and iHeartRadio. From myself and the RNZ Pacific team, Dolfa Soi Fua.